Lesson number 108 is called Square Roots Revisited in Radical Equations. And when we're working with problems like we see here where we have to solve, we're going to be working with square roots. And for these radical equations, our goal is going to be to isolate the radical and then eventually isolate the variable to figure out what it's equal to. Now in this problem, the first thing we need to do to figure out what x is equal to to solve is to add 5 to both sides of the equation. So we're going to add 5 to both sides of the equation. And then our problem is going to look like this. We're going to get the square root of x squared plus 9. And that's all going to be equal to 5. Then, in order for us to undo the square root of something, well, to undo the square root, we've got to square it. And what that looks like is this. We're going to take this whole piece, and we're going to square it. And when we square a square root, it cancels out. Now what we do to one side, we have to do to the other side of the equation. So we're going to square this piece as well. Let's rewrite. Here we're going to get x squared plus 9, because the square undid the square root, is equal to 5 squared. That's 25. Now we can go ahead and figure out what x squared is going to be equal to, or x specifically. And we're going to figure out what x squared is going to be equal to by subtracting 9 from both sides. If we subtract 9 from both sides, we're going to get x squared is equal to 25 minus 9. That's 16. Now, we know something squared equals 16. That must be 4. So 4 squared equals 16. That's true. So x equals 4. Or we could say negative 4 squared equals 16. And that's also true. So in this problem, our answer is going to be x equals 4 or negative 4. Or we could write 4 and negative 4. Well, we can go ahead and box this. And in these problems, before we move on to the next step, we've got to check our answers to make sure they're true. Let's go ahead and do that on the top. So we're going to take the square root, and first we're going to do the positive 4. So we're going to substitute 4, and we're going to get 4 squared plus 9 minus 5. And it should be equal to 0 if this is true. 4 squared is 16. And 16 plus 9, that's going to give us 25. So the square root of 25 minus 5, is that equal to 0? square root of 25 is 5, so 5 minus 5, that's equal to 0. That's true. So this answer, x equals 4, is correct. Now let's try our other one. We've got negative 4 as a possible answer. So we'll put a negative in here in parentheses. So we've got negative 4 squared. Negative 4 squared. Well, that's also 16. 16 plus 9 is 25. The square root of 25 is 5. So 5 minus 5 equals 0. So both of these answers are correct. x equals 4 or negative 4. Let's look at another one. Here we want to solve. We're going to go through the similar process. Let's first find what x is going to be by subtracting 3 on both sides. So when we go through that, we're going to get the square root of x minus 2 is equal to 0 minus 3. That's negative 3. Then we have to square both sides. So when we square both sides, that undoes the square root. And we're going to get x minus 2 is equal to negative 3 squared. That means negative 3 times negative 3, which is 9. Then let's add 2 to both sides to figure out what x will be. And here we see x is equal to 9 plus 2. That's 11. We can go ahead and box our answer. But it's important that we go ahead and check these. So, let's check it. We're going to say, and we'll do our check in a different color. We're going to do the square root of x is 11, so 11 minus 2, plus 3. And if it's true, it'll equal 0. 11 minus 2, that's 9. Plus 3, and that should be equal to 0 if this is the correct answer. Square root of 9 is 3, and 3 plus 3. Well, 3 plus 3 does not equal 0. 6, well, 6 is not equal to 0. Hmm. Well, this means that since we checked our answer, and it didn't work out, that this is not the answer for our solution. In fact, since this was the only answer we have, we can cross this one out, and we can say there are no real answers. Because we went through our math, we found the answer, but when we checked our work, it didn't work. And that happens and we call that a no real answer situation. Let's look at a few more. 
here we have a little bit different one. And in this one, we've got the square root of x minus 1 minus 3 plus x equals 0. So if we want to go ahead and solve this, first let's go ahead and we will add 3 to both sides of our equation. When we add 3 to both sides of our equation, we're going to get the square root of x minus 1 plus x is equal to 3. Now, since our first goal is to isolate the radical, we're also going to have to move our x to the other side. So let's subtract x. When we do that, we get the square root of x minus 1 is equal to 3 minus x. From here, we can go ahead and square both sides. So we square our square root to undo it, because that's equal to 1. And then we're going to square the other side. So what we're going to get is x minus 1 is equal to 3 minus x times 3 minus x. And we can go ahead and expand this binomial now. We'll have x minus 1 is equal to 3 times 3, that's 9. 3 times negative x is going to give us negative 3x. Negative x times 3 is going to give us negative 3x. And negative x times negative x is going to give us positive x squared. Now you'll notice this is in reverse order that we normally write our binomials. And this is not in descending order of the variable, it's actually ascending order of the variable. But we can work with that. And the way we can work with that is to put our x's together. So we're going to get 9 minus 6x plus x squared. We still have x minus 1 on our left hand side. So when we go through this one, well, we, let's add 1 to both sides. When we add 1 to both sides, we'll continue our work on this piece. We're going to get x is equal to 9 plus 1 is 10 minus 6x plus x squared whoops, plus x squared. Then we need to subtract our x. We're going to subtract another x and we're going to get 0 is equal to 10 minus 7x plus x squared. Now let's rewrite this to say 0 is equal to x squared minus 7x plus 10. And we can see now that when we go through this problem, we're going to have to factor. Well, what numbers multiply to 10 and add to negative 7? If we look at that, and let's separate our work here, we've got a lot of information all at the same time. x times x gives us x squared. And then negative 5 and negative 2 multiply to, negative, to positive 10 and add to negative 7. So we can now figure out our answer. x must equal 5, because 5 minus 5 is 0. And x must equal 2, because 2 minus 2 is 0. Let's circle those. Now, what I'd like you to do, and you can pause the video now, is to check these two answers and see which ones work. Now after you went through and checked your work, what you should have found is that x equals 2 checks, and x equals 5 does not check. So as we check those problems, we can see that our only answer here, we only have one answer that checks, so our answer that we'll report is x is equal to 2. We've got one more problem. Let's go ahead and look at that problem. Here we have one that looks a little bit different because we have square roots on both sides. But in fact, we're going to treat it the same way. Let's isolate the x. So when we isolate the x on the left, let's take this whole piece and we're going to square it. Because to undo a square root, we square. And what we do on one side, we do on the other. Well, because the square root, so we're left with 2x minus 3 is equal to x plus 2. So we take all that information and we can now solve. Well, if we solve it, we're going to subtract x from both sides, and we're left with 2x minus x, that's just x. And then at the same step, let's add 3. We're going to add 3, and when we add 3 to 2, we get 5. So x is equal to 5. Oh, that one worked out quickly. So we can take that x equals 5, and we can check our work. Please go ahead now and check to see if x equals 5 is the correct solution for this problem we saw when we substitute 5 and 4x on both sides, 
we end up with the square root of 7 equals the square root of 7. Hopefully you got that one as well. This means our work is correct. We've got our final answer. x is equal to 5. Lesson practice will be on page 456. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.